Good day and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into an exciting topic in electricity, resistors in electrical circuits. We'll explore how resistors are used, and we'll investigate the factors that affect resistance, such as type of material, length, and thickness of a conductor. Here's a quick question to get you thinking. Why do devices like a cell phone need resistors? Share your ideas in the comments below, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Make sure you stay with us until the end for a fun and interactive quiz to test your understanding. It's the perfect way to review what you've learned and build your confidence. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss our weekly videos. Let's get started. Electricity flows through some materials but not through others. We will explore the difference between conductors and insulators. Conductors, like metals, allow electric current to pass through them easily, while insulators, like plastic or rubber, prevent the flow of current. Understanding how and why this happens is key to building and using electric circuits safely and effectively. Materials that allow electric charge to flow through them are called conductors, while those that do not allow the passage of electric charge are called insulators. A conductor is usually a metal, and it allows electric current to flow easily. Electric current is simply the flow of electric charge, in metals, this is the movement of electrons. In a metal conductor, the material is made up of tiny particles called atoms. At the center of each atom is a positive nucleus, and surrounding it are electrons. The outermost electrons in metal atoms are not tightly held. Instead, they are free to move from one atom to another. Because of this, we say that metals have a structure made up of positive nuclei in a sea of free-moving electrons. This is what makes metals such good conductors. When a metal wire is connected to a battery, the free electrons in the metal begin to move in the same direction, from the negative terminal of the battery, through the wire, towards the positive terminal. This movement of electrons forms an electric current. Good conductors not only allow charge to flow easily, but they also do not heat up much when current passes through them. On the other hand, insulators are materials that do not allow electric current to flow. These are usually non-metals, and their electrons are held tightly by the positive nuclei inside their atoms. Because the electrons are not free to move, they cannot carry charge through the material, and so no current flows when an insulator is connected in a circuit. However, an insulator can be charged electrostatically, for example, by rubbing it with a piece of cloth. In this case, the charge stays on the surface of the insulator. But the charge doesn't stay forever. In wet or moist weather, the insulator gradually loses its charge into the air. If you touch the insulator with your hand, the charge flows away quickly, this process is called earthing the charge. It's important to remember that you cannot charge a conductor by rubbing it. That's because conductors, like metals, allow electric charges to move freely. So, if you try to build up charge by rubbing, the charge will not stay in one place, it will flow away immediately through the metal. That's why we use insulators, like plastic or rubber, for rubbing and building up static electricity, because the charges stay on the surface. In science, we often say that metals are good conductors of electricity, but no material is a perfect conductor. Even the best conductors still slow down the flow of electric charge a little. This slowing down is called resistance. Resistance is the degree to which a material resists or opposes the flow of electric current. It is measured in ohms. A good conductor, like copper, has low resistance and allows a lot of current to pass through. A material with high resistance allows only a small amount of current to flow. 
Some materials are specially chosen for their resistance and are used to control the amount of current in a circuit. These are called resistors. A resistor consists of conductive material with higher resistance to control and slow down the current or to convert electrical energy into other forms, like heat or light. The filament inside a light bulb, made of very thin tungsten wire, resists the current so much that it heats up and produces light. As electric current flows through a conductor, the moving electrons collide with atoms inside the material. These collisions cause the atoms to vibrate, producing heat. This is why conductors, even good ones, warm up when current passes through them. Sometimes this heat is useful, like in a toaster or an iron. Other times, it's just wasted energy, for example, computers and phones get warm when they are used because of this heat loss. In electrical systems, the relationship between resistance, current, and voltage is shown in the formula. V equals I times R. Where V is the potential difference, in volts, I is the current, in amperes, R is the resistance, in ohms. In an electric circuit, resistors play a very important role. They are used to control how much electric current flows through the circuit. When a resistor is placed in the same circuit as another electrical component, it helps make sure that only a safe amount of current passes through that component. This prevents the component from getting damaged by too much electricity. Some resistors are specially made to offer a fixed level of resistance, even when the temperature around them changes. These are called fixed resistors, and they help keep the circuit working properly. You can often spot resistors on a computer sound card by looking for small components with colorful stripes, these stripes help identify the resistor's value. Resistors are not just for controlling current, they also help convert electrical energy into other useful forms of energy. For example, the heating element in an electric kettle is a type of resistor. It turns electrical energy into heat energy, which is used to boil water. In this way, resistors help make appliances work as intended by managing energy transformation. Some resistors are adjustable. These are called variable resistors. They do not have a fixed resistance and can change how much they resist the current. Devices like dimmer switches for lights and volume controls on radios use these variable resistors, also known as rheostats. Another special type of resistor is the light-dependent resistor or LDR. Its resistance changes depending on how much light it receives. When it's dark, the LDR has high resistance, and when it's light, the resistance goes down. LDRs are often used to turn outdoor lights on automatically at night and off during the day. Another important component is the diode. Diodes are special electrical parts that only allow current to flow in one direction. When current tries to flow in the opposite direction, the diode blocks it by giving a very high resistance. This helps protect circuits and make sure that electricity flows the right way. Diodes are not made from metals like the ones in kettles or hair dryers, they are made from materials called semiconductors. A type of diode called a light-emitting diode, LED, gives off light when electricity passes through it. You can see many LEDs in traffic lights. There are also light-sensitive diodes, which work the opposite way, they take in light energy, like sunlight, and turn it into electrical energy. The resistance of a conductor is not always the same, it can change depending on certain factors. These factors affect how easily electric current can flow through the material. Understanding what influences resistance helps us design circuits that work safely and efficiently. There are four main factors that affect resistance, the type of material, the length and thickness of the conductor, and its temperature. Type of material influences resistance. Different conducting materials offer different forms of resistance against electrical current. For example, copper wire conducts a greater current than an equal length of nichrome wire of the same thickness. Nichrome wire therefore has a greater resistance. 
In a circuit where an ammeter is connected in series, a copper wire gives a reading of 0.6 amps, while a nichrome wire of the same length and thickness gives a reading of only 0.1 amps. This shows that more electric current passes through the copper wire than through the nichrome wire. Therefore, copper has a lower resistance compared to nichrome. Thickness of the conductor also influences resistance. Thinner wires offer more resistance than thicker wires. The thicker the conductor, the less its resistance and the greater the current that will flow through the conductor. Resistance is also affected by the length of the conductor. Longer wires offer more resistance than short wires. The longer the conductor is made, the higher its resistance and the smaller the current that will flow through it. In a circuit where an ammeter is connected in series, a long wire gives a reading of 0.1 amps, while a short wire of the same material and thickness gives a reading of 0.4 amps. This shows that less electric current passes through the longer wire, meaning it has more resistance. Therefore, the longer the wire, the greater its resistance. Resistance is also influenced by the temperature of the conductor. Hotter conductors offer more resistance than cooler conductors. The hotter the conductor becomes, the greater its resistance and the smaller the current that it lets through. To investigate the effect of material type on resistance, a simple series circuit can be constructed using a battery, an ammeter, a light bulb, or lead, and conducting wires. Copper and nichrome wires of equal length and thickness can be tested. Each wire is connected into the circuit, and the current measured using an ammeter. Since the voltage from the battery remains constant, lower current readings can be interpreted as higher resistance. The hypothesis in such an experiment can be that the type of material would affect the resistance of the conductor, copper, being a better conductor, would allow more current to flow than nichrome. The independent variable would be the type of conductor, copper or nichrome, the dependent variable was the current ammeter reading, and the controlled variables would be the length and thickness of the wires, the battery voltage, and the temperature. The same experimental setup can also be used to investigate how length and thickness of the wire affect resistance. Lower current readings indicate greater resistance. We have come to the end of today's lesson. As we've seen, resistors play many important roles in electrical circuits and devices. Before we go, please try the following questions, the answers will pop up shortly after each one, so feel free to pause the video if you need more time. This is a key part of consolidating what you've learned. In the next video, we'll be exploring series and parallel circuits. Be sure to check the description below for the link to that video and many more. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Thank you so much for watching, and keep well until next time.